I'm Robert Parr, Technical Director at Gulf Coast Soccer, and I'm here with another Soccer Tactics Chalk Talk. The attacking rhythm of a game is defined by the dominant pattern of repeating movements that involve the ball. The tempo of the game and the style of play employed by both teams determine the game's overall rhythm. One way to define the attacking rhythm is by counting the average number of touches used by each player on the ball between passes. Some teams seek to play a one-touch possession-based soccer, others prefer to play a two-touch rhythm, and some teams emphasize individual attacking runs over passing-based rhythms. In soccer, we usually see two distinct types of attacking rhythms, the direct counter-attacking style or the indirect build-up style. Counter-attacking teams will attempt to score as quickly as possible whenever they win possession of the ball. Build-up teams will seek to maintain ball possession for extended periods of time, attempting to score only after a clear opportunity presents itself. In this video, we will be examining the build-up attack. To build up the attack, players must do a few things. First, they must make firm passes to the feet of their teammates to move the ball around the field quickly. They need to make runs off the ball to provide multiple supporting options for the player with the ball. We want to make the defensive players chase the ball whenever possible. This wears them down physically and stretches their collective shape to open up attacking seams. We need to play the ball away from pockets of defensive pressure so we can draw out the defense and maintain ball possession. We must use combination play and interpassing sequences to improve our field position, slowly but surely. Players should play the odds, avoid high risk passes and low percentage shots, and wait for high percentage chances to score. Finally, we can look for moments to accelerate the passing rhythm so we catch defenders off guard and can break through their tactical lines. To see the build-up style of play in action, consider this moment from a Bundesliga match between Stuttgart and Bayern Munich that was broadcast by Fox Sports in December 2017. In this clip, Bayern is attacking in blue, while Stuttgart is defending in white. Note how each Bayern player first controls the ball before looking to deliver the next pass, although these are some of the best players in the world who clearly have the ability to play one-touch soccer They've chosen to prioritize ball control over physical and technical speed of play by using a three-touch attacking rhythm. On average, the first touch controls the ball, the second touch changes the direction of play, and the third touch delivers the next pass. If options are available sooner, the player may use just two touches. If options are slow to develop, then the dribbler may use an extra touch to open new angles of support. The pattern was accelerated just once with a one-touch pass down the left wing. Unfortunately, the quality of the pass was not very good and the receiving player had to waste a touch just to keep the ball from going out of bounds. The players then restored their desired rhythm and ultimately created a shot on goal that forced a diving save from the goalkeeper. With this in mind, let's rewind to see the entire sequence one more time. Akolo putting Hummels under pressure. It's been easy for Bayern to play out on every occasion. But if any team can play out under pressure, it is Bayern Munich. Lewandowski dropping ever deeper to get some touches in possession. Continues his run as well, Robert Lewandowski. And he keeps the ball in play. This is what makes him so good. He can do so much, Lewandowski. Come deep, and he ends up in the box now. Now allows that one run through. Lewandowski, a fraction of space for Lewandowski. Cold effort, and Zila has to make a very good save. Just got it out of his feet quickly enough, Lewandowski, to go for goal. And Zila with a very, very good stop. You will often see changes in the rhythm as a team moves the ball through the thirds of the field. Reducing the touch count accelerates the game, which can help catch defenders who are out of position. Increasing the touch count slows the game down, which can help to manage the time on the clock and can give teammates more time to recover and to reposition themselves. An understanding of rhythm is important because it makes it easier for players to anticipate and coordinate their actions with their teammates. If you expect your teammate to play the ball forward, you'll know to start running toward that open space. If you expect your teammate to look for a short pass to your feet, you'll know to check back to the ball so you can receive that pass. When teammates expect different options from each other, the attack will break down. At Gulf Coast, we prefer to maintain a two-touch or three-touch attacking rhythm with just a few exceptions. Every player must control the ball with the first touch and then find an appropriate pass or shot within the next one or two touches. Two touches are almost always better than one. Since the ball has been controlled first, the quality of the subsequent pass or shot improves. The brief time between touches gives teammates time to move into a new supporting position before you play the ball to them. Finally, the time between the first and second touch also allows opponents enough time to make mistakes in their positioning due to ball watching and ball chasing tendencies. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. 
Be sure to subscribe to our channel to get more of our Chalk Talks in the future.